Weasels Rip My Flesh got me to watch by the title alone. And thankfully it's not just clickbait. Weasels really do rip flesh. Named after the Mothers of Invention album of the same name, the song Weasels Rip My Flesh sounds like this. What are we getting ourselves into here? It opens up with a narrator talking about the purpose of life and how Judgment Day is coming. It tries to set the mood, but it's really just a bunch of incoherent rambling that doesn't really make sense. It's like they put a bunch of spooky words into a blender and picked them out at random. This is Judgment Day for those of you unlucky enough to have been born this day. Now some girls are heading home from a night out and they're attacked. What's going on here? That's not a weasel, that's just a guy. Where are the weasels at? Now we see a spaceship. Okay, really, what's going on? Well, out of this very crude model rocket comes some equipment that scoops up some slime and then heads back to Earth, only to crash and land into a lake and its radioactive contents spill out. Now some kids are kicking a soccer ball around, and one hits it a little too hard, and it goes flying into the woods. They both go looking for it, and, well, they stumble upon the radioactive canisters. While looking at them, a weasel bites one of the kids on the leg, and to get their revenge, they pour the slime into its hole. Man, kids are messed up. The stuff pours on top of the weasel, which seems to dissolve it, and then it turns into... Whatever this is. Well, as the kids leave, they realize that they forgot the lid to the canister, which I guess they want to keep for some reason. So he goes back for it, and he's attacked. Not long after that, the other kid goes looking for his friend, and once he sees him dead, he takes off. Or, well, he kind of hobbles off. Remember, the weasel bit him on the foot, so he can't run that fast. And then the mutant weasel makes him his next meal. Next, we meet Fred, just some guy who's coming home from work or something, and he accidentally hits the weasel. He gets out to look at the damage, and he sees that he ripped off one of its arms in the crash. So he does what anyone would do, wraps it up in a sheet and takes it home with him. Once he gets there, he starts to do some experiments on it, and then decides to call his friend Jake to come over and take a look. I don't believe it. Look at the mustaches on these guys. Were these the inspiration for the Mario Brothers? Well, Fred tells Jake about his discovery and goes to show him the arm in the kitchen, but it's not there. Yeah, like Thing from the Adams Family, it got up and walked away, and is now hiding under the kitchen table. It attacks Jake. How, I don't know, it doesn't have teeth, maybe it gave him an Indian burn. Well, this transforms Jake into a ravenous animal, and he attacks Fred by cutting his leg off. Ew. I just gotta mention this part real quick. There's this girl walking her dog, and he gets away. She runs after it, only to find the kid from the beginning. And just look at that wig. It gets me every time I see it. I guess at this point, the filmmakers thought you might be a little confused, so they threw in a little news segment to get you caught up. Basically, there was a lot of strange disappearances happening in this area, and it also just happened to be the same place a rocket crashed coming back from Venus. So the slime that caused all these problems is some Venus slime. Got it? Good. Moving on. Now we meet Inspector Cameron and Detective Anderson two guys assigned to figure out why everyone around the lake is disappearing. And it doesn't take them long to find out who's been doing it. This is Dr. Sendum. He takes their guns and leads them to a dirt mound, which is his secret entrance to an underground base. When they climb in, however, you can plainly see it's just some guy's basement. The doors look completely different. Anyway, here the doctor sits them down and explains everything in black and white for the gentleman. 
He's some mad scientist that built this lab and made the spaceship crash, just so he could steal the Venus slime to perform experiments with. He says that now he has the power to change the Earth. He could either wipe it out or cure all diseases. Being a mad scientist, guess which one he's going to do. Come with me. He's found out, by experimenting with the Venus slime weasels, that if you dismember them, the limbs will grow back on the host, and the dismembered limb will grow a whole new body, making them able to multiply into a weasel army. There's only one problem. The blood in the rodents is impure. So, by drugging the agents, he can use human blood, which he thinks will have a better outcome. Well, newsflash, it doesn't. The doctor gets some weasel blood ready and injects it into his human subjects, which is Detective Anderson and the two girls from the beginning. Oh, so that scene did have a purpose after all. Cameron manages to wake up before he gets his injection, and by lighting his cigarette, he's able to burn the ropes and escape. See kids, smoking can save your life. Now free, Cameron goes around hunting the doctor and finding all the multiplied weasels in their containment. Wanting to end all this, he lights them on fire. When the doctor finds out what he's done, he attacks Cameron with a rake. Ouch! They fight, and it ends with Cameron finding his gun and shooting the doctor in the back. But that only slows him down. For now, the doctor still has to learn what really happens when you inject a human with weasel blood. And he finds out. It turns into... this. Clearly it's Anderson. He's wearing the same shirt. But what do you call this thing? I have to admit, I kinda like it. Well, this abomination fights the doc for a while, but eventually he's able to escape into the room with the original weasel, which breaks out of its cage and eats Sendum's arm. While all this is happening, Cameron manages to escape outside, but as he does, the ground starts to lift up, and the giant rodent emerges from the dirt. Cameron tries to shoot it, but bullets do nothing to this creature. The only thing that can save Cameron now is another monster. And, luckily, Anderson's there to help out, and he kills the beast. Finally, we see the doctor, who's lived through losing his arm and was able to escape from the lab. Him and Cameron have a stare down, but in the end, Cameron's quicker, and he shoots Dr. Sendum, which really only results in him making silly faces. The doc does manage to shoot Cameron in the leg, and he thinks he's won, but then a shark comes out of nowhere and takes the doctor's other arm. Cameron gets up and stumbles away, but hey, at least he's alive, and he survived weasels ripping his flesh. What a weird movie, but there was just something about it that I liked. This isn't going to win any major awards or anything like that, but it was made in 1979 with a Super 8 camera and a couple of high schoolers, so you got to give them credit where credit is due. Some of the gore effects weren't that bad either, and the storyline is taken right from a fun 50s B-movie. It never takes itself too seriously, and it's just the right length. Only an hour and seven minutes long, not much time for filler. Even so, I don't recommend sitting down by yourself or even with one other person to watch this. Weasels Rip My Flesh is a party movie. Something you have on in the background so your guest will say, what the heck is that? And you can proudly say, oh, that's just Weasels Rip My Flesh. And then they'll look at you like you're crazy. I give Weasels Rip My Flesh two and a half skulls wearing wigs out of four. The serenity holds a deep ominous foreboding as a cool evil smell permeates the silent scape.